Today on the pitch, we look at Block Energy, a modular hybrid DC AC microgrid platform that is poised to lead the distributed clean energy revolution from the grid edge. Built to function as a mesh network, Block Energy connects local PV generation and storage throughout communities of all sizes in self sustaining block loops. But as slick and tested as the technology is, its utility focused business model is the piece that could change everything. And here to explain why is Rob Bennett, CEO of Amera Technologies LLC. Welcome to the pitch, Rob. Thanks, Chris. Very happy to be here. So um, there's a lot to get into, but we'll start three years ago. You're the CEO at Amera, one of the largest utilities in North America, and you would like to develop a disruptive technology that kind of solves our renewable energy problem, but uh, something that is scalable and usable on the utility end of things. What were the main problems you were trying to solve at that time um, from the utility point of view? The last three years have gone by very quickly, I, I must say. But uh, our thinking at that time, Chris, was uh, was uh, as much about disruptive technologies as it was about the need to improve customer service. Just like every utility in the sector, uh, our utilities were dealing with different growing demands for clean energy and uh, more and more pressing concerns about the reliability of the existing power system. So we started out with the concept of how, how do we address those customer concerns? How do we, how do we enhance the experience? And uh, technology seemed to be a very smart way to, to begin. And fortunately for us, we had the chance to start with a completely clean sheet of paper and reimagine how we might be able to deliver cleaner and more reliable uh, electricity, but through the format of the existing utilities. That to us was critically important because if we really want to make a big difference in renewable energy provision uh, quickly, then the utilities play a, a, a pivotal role in making that happen. There are, of course, lots of independent things that could be done, but with the power of the utilities, their capability, uh, we think that you can make uh, much, much more advanced steps on clean energy and make the power system more reliable at the same time, which is a thought that has been, uh, that's, that, that's been a, a hard nut to crack for a number of years. So the answer you come up with on that blank sheet of paper that you're drawing on, you know, is a, a microgrid platform that puts solar uh, batteries and a controller at every home in a new neighborhood and then groups those homes uh, together in a shared network that is connected to a central location that has central storage that then connects to the grid. Um, to me, it's pretty neat, but I'm wondering, you know, why are local utilities serving new homes at the grid edge going to be drawn to that platform? Well, the uh, that's an important question, Chris, and and certainly uh, we we know a lot about utilities. Our our essence, we've we've been a, a company that's been operating since 1885. We run utilities in Canada, uh, the United States, and the Caribbean. And we have a lot of experience around what it is that, that the utilities need to do next to meet those customer uh, concerns or that uh, desire for better customer service. And as I said, we had the chance to go right back to the fundamentals and use the availability of technology that we have at our disposal today, technology like solar, like batteries, power electronics, advanced control algorithms, and, and, and reimagine how we might do it using all of those tools that are available now. The answer is a direct current microgrid format, which we, we, which we focus primarily on new residential construction. The reason for that is quite simple. It's because you're, not, you're dealing with new load growth, new, uh, new assets, and not needing to retire prematurely assets that have been deployed to serve customers in existing communities. So from a utility point of view, this is a solution that, that can provide some great answers to the need to add renewable energy and not disrupt their, their current business their, or, or have to remove equipment that they already have deployed, but at the same time provide customers with an exciting new technology, which in the utility industry, it's we generally uh, pretty well use the same technology that we started out with 100 years ago. This is a big step forward, and I think it'll make a lot of sense to utilities as a new way to meet those customer concerns. That maybe partially answers my next question here. Um, because utilities are going to want to know, I think, right out of the gate, 
why is this technology different than other disruptive power technologies? The technology is different, but the business approach is also quite different. We hear and have seen the same thing uh, in terms of people having a desire to be off the grid. And while some people certainly do, and it's important to, to some folks, for the most part, uh, we don't think that people really want to be off the grid. They just want to have a better grid experience. They want cleaner energy, they want better reliability, and they want it to happen in a way that's simple and hassle-free for them. In today's world, people trying to do that are, are faced with some significant decisions about technology choices for solar on their, on their roof. How are they going to uh, collect that, uh, store that, interconnect with the utility? There's a lot of complexity. And uh, our business model is really focused on the idea that all of that complexity should be dealt with by the local utility. And if they have a microgrid tool like ours that integrates into the local AC uh, network seamlessly, provides a seamless reliability to the community it serves, runs on mostly 70 to 80 percent renewable energy from solar primarily, and stores the energy locally, it not only becomes a valuable asset for the community, uh, and a great asset for the utility to own, but it's also uh, it also has the potential to be an important grid asset as a storage asset and backup generation asset. So all of these things come together and just point to a common sense approach of utility ownership to make it uh, hassle free and to get us to the clean energy goals we need to get to much faster than we would get there as a group as individuals trying to do that on our own at our own home. Makes perfect sense to me. And then I, again, I kind of step into uh, utility shoes, which I have never done before. So this is why it's good to talk to you about it. You know, why would I be more interested in serving those new loads in block loops versus, you know, a peaker plant or maybe a larger scale renewable energy plant uh, kind of taking that centralized approach, you know, that we have been doing it? Right. Well, in terms of utility shoes, I've been wearing utility shoes for over uh, 30 years. So I, I know well uh, uh, what it takes to make the utilities work. And I know very well the, the really tough decisions that utility CEOs need to make about how to meet load growth. And uh, in the past, uh, 15, 20 years ago, it might have been much simpler. Meeting load growth meant build a new gas-powered generating station, build new transmission lines, and, uh, and fill up that, uh, that plant over the next 15 or 20 years to its full capacity. Those decisions are always big, expensive, important decisions for utilities. And, and there's some degree of risk that comes along with any decision that you make that is that forward looking. It has to, that decision has to stand the test of time for the next 40 or 45 years. The utilities using systems like block energy can make much smaller decisions about how to meet a significant portion of their load growth. One community at a time, effectively one customer at a time, you deploy the capital as it's required. That allows you to uh, not completely avoid those large power plant decisions or large infrastructure decisions that all utilities will need to make, but you can push those decisions a little bit farther into the future. And as a utility CEO, that means that you'll have more information, better information, new technology at your disposal. So there are, are uh, I believe, we believe, a lot of advantages for the utility to take this uh, very incremental, capital efficient approach to meeting the needs of a very significant segment, which is the new customer, uh, new residential customer segment. If we zoom out just a little bit at the at the state level, uh, is there advantages there? Uh, why is it a why is Block Energy maybe a plus at the state level? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, the the local utility and the state regulator, and to to a degree, the state government all need to work together collaboratively to make sure that the best long-term decisions are being made for utility customers. It has such a huge impact on the economy. The cost of electricity needs to be uh, managed properly, of course. The reliability of electricity is has become, at the state level and federal level, a much greater concern than it has been for most of my career. It's always been a concern, but in, in today's world where we're electrifying everything, and ultimately we'll have completely electrified uh, uh, transportation, for example, the criticality of the electric uh, reliability is just, it's paramount. And uh, the states are reacting to that. In Florida, they've passed legislation that 
enables the utilities to make significant investments in hardening of the system, upgrading of the system. You'll see that everywhere because uh, it's such an important community and uh, state and even, in, even national security issue around the reliability of electricity. So uh, we see the block energy system as uh, uh, the utility and the state regulator working uh, collaboratively to bring a new technology that can accomplish the goals that the state and the utility have. They're completely aligned. And, uh, and we think that it'll have an important, a really important impact on the security feeling of the customers that have this type of uh, energy system in their community. This vision does come to life. Um, we're trading large central assets over time for thousands into the millions of tiny, tinier assets. Uh, so how does that play out in terms of uh, O&M, operations and maintenance of the system at that point? It sounds maybe more unwieldy to me, or I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Well, it's often said, Chris, that the, the modern electric power system that we use today is the most complex machine that, that humans have ever made. It's, uh, it's a massive, interconnected, uh, highly complex piece of infrastructure that, for the most part, we all take for granted. And, uh, and from the utility perspective, we want people to take it for granted. It should work perfectly uh, almost all of the time. But uh, the, the fact is that uh, the system today is made of hundreds of thousands, millions of pieces of equipment that operate in a radial fashion. That's one of the reasons that reliability is so challenging. You have to make electricity 50 miles away at a power plant, sometimes hundreds uh, or even a thousand miles away, and move that energy along a, a contiguous circuit uh, all the way to the customer and interconnected by hundreds of thousands of uh, connections, elements. The failure of any one of those connections leads to a, a, a failure of delivery of energy to the customer because they're all connected in series. The, the block energy system, uh, yes, it's going to have a lot of small parts, but they're all the same. It's very modular. Uh, it's it's uh, using a DC. One of the reasons we use the DC technology is because of the, the smarts and modularity of interconnection. It's, it's better reliability characteristics. And the end result of that, we believe, is going to be a much more reliable system because most of your energy will be made and stored locally. It won't be brought over a large series connected network that is obviously subject to failure from anything, car accidents, animal contacts, tree contacts, lightning, uh, who knows? And when, power, when a power outage happens on the large interconnected system, it's, all, it's often very difficult to find out where the problem is. These, these microgrid systems have so much intelligence and analytics happening that pinpointing the problem will be much easier, faster. And in many cases, the problem will be identified and resolved without the power system ever going off or the customers ever knowing there was an issue. This is all, you know, very exciting, you know, as a homeowner who's had his power go out a couple of times while working from home. It's a fundamental shift, you know, in how uh, I would be potentially interfacing with my utility. Uh, and, you know, I guess that's how I wanted to, to end here. Um, if this is the future that arrives, what do you think that does change about the customer utility interaction and in like a is it what's different about it? Um, how do I interact with them? How do they interact with me? Uh, before talking about change, it's important to recognize one of the, the fundamental relationships that customers have with utilities. If you look at uh, surveys across North America, you'll find that when it comes to electricity, utilities are trusted to be the experts from a customer's perspective. And they're trusted to be there in the long term to take care of these assets. And that's exactly the value that they can bring by using this asset and getting it out into communities more because customers will, will trust utilities more and value their long-term uh, uh, presence. So with that said, it also, from a utility perspective, gives them a completely new tool. It, it, it's been a while since you've heard of anything from the utility that is completely uh, modern um, and even more futuristic than than you might uh, than you might expect. Uh, automated metering may be the latest example of what utilities have come out with that helps a lot. This has all of those characteristics built in. It's much smarter. There will be opportunities for much more uh, uh, information extraction from the system that ultimately can help customers manage the efficiency of their electricity usage in their homes. It may help. It will help them. In fact, uh, interconnect. 
uh, electric vehicles directly into uh, uh, a high capacity charging network, which is effectively our DC grid. So it enables uh, a whole new load interaction and potentially uh, interactive connected use of those uh, batteries in those cars in the future. It sets the utility up to be future ready. We, we believe long term that energy consumption in your home is going to migrate to direct current format. In fact, today, most of the appliances in your home, if you have a modern home, are, are DC, but we convert the AC to DC to be able to use it inside of the appliances that we use every day. That's inefficient and ineffective uh, and costs more money, quite frankly. The DC network that we're introducing is, is future ready. And I think anything that's future ready that has a lot of uh, opportunities to enhance the information sharing with customers sets anybody up, and in this case, particularly utilities, sets them up to be able to have a much deeper relationship with the customer, which of course every business wants. We want to do a good job, serve our customers well, and be valued. For more on Block Energy, head to the website links below or stay tuned for the summer issue of Solar Builder Magazine.